Once again, this video is to refresh those that already have hands-on training in short haul techniques and helicopter safety. General safety. These are some terms that you should familiarize yourself with regarding helicopter safety and use. The aircraft commander. He or she pilots the helicopter. Always listen to and obey your pilot as these machines are delicate and extremely complex. Auto rotation. A term used for an emergency landing using emergency power. Chalk. The formation of personnel that is prepared to board a helicopter. Chalk commander. The person in charge of preparing and guiding the other personnel. Disc. The imaginary circle used to distinguish the location of propeller blades. Endurance. A term used to gauge the total time the aircraft can fly before refueling. FOD. Foreign objects and debris. Heliport, a terminal for incoming and outgoing helicopters. Landing point, an area that can receive a single helicopter. Landing zone, a larger area that can receive multiple helicopters. Rotor wash, wind generated by the main rotor blade. Air crew, pilot, in command of overall operation. Spotter, assistant to the pilot for aircraft preparation and safety. Ground Technical Crew, the assistance for maintenance and ground safety. Ground Guide, the individual in charge of preparation and security at a landing point. Safety Rules. At no time will anyone go near the rear or tail section of the helicopter. The pilot and crew must be obeyed at all times. Smoking is not permitted within 50 meters of the aircraft. Be mindful of static electricity. Helicopters generate static electricity in the hover. If you can help it, avoid touching the airframe before the aircraft grounds itself. Never drive a vehicle within 25 meters of the aircraft. All police must not take Olerium capsicum spray into the passenger compartments of the helicopter in case of accidental discharge. The spray is to be placed in a sealed plastic bag then stored in the rear cargo compartment. The pitot tube is a small silver projection at the front of the helicopter. It measures airspeed and can become extremely hot. The main rotor on top of the helicopter is absolutely a point of caution. The rotor can dip as low as 3 feet in the 12 o'clock position. You must always approach and exit the helicopter from the 10 or 2 o'clock position, relative to the front of the aircraft. Once seated, secure your seat belt. This is to remain on until the pilot directs you to remove it. The headsets are located within the aircraft passenger compartments, typically behind the head cushion. If you have a boom microphone attached to your headset, do not talk during liftoff or landing unless it is for urgent safety reasons. The pilot must have freedom to communicate at these times. While in the aircraft, it is everyone's responsibility to look out for hazards. This may include other aircrafts, wires or cables, birds, trees, fences, building antennae, or even pedestrians in remote landing points within the Niagara Gorge. Remember that everyone must constantly act as a spotter. Preparation of self and equipment. Remember to remain alert at all times. Always be planning ahead and be ready to execute the next course of action. When active, be vigilant for a sudden change in the aircraft's position. All clothing and equipment must be neatly secured. Headgear, unless fitted with a chin strap, must be removed and secured. Ensure all shoelaces are securely tied and all straps on your packs are done up and use protective eyewear. Medical equipment such as IV poles must be lowered and secured before flight. Long items such as ladders, stretchers or poles must be carried horizontally on approach. Before approaching the aircraft, use the buddy system to check each other over for loose straps or open pockets. Be sure to equip a personal flotation device if you are flying above water. Be mindful that your PFD does not have an auto inflation device on it, such as those found on the Mustang PFDs. Remember, no OC spray in the passenger compartment. Orientation to the Bell 407 aircraft. This section is to serve as an introduction to the main components of the helicopter. Forward section, main rotor, skids, doors, 
Pedo tube. Cable shears. Seating. The pilot and co-pilot seats in the front make up two seats. The passenger compartment contains a maximum of five seats. Seat belts. There are shoulder harness belts in the front two seats and traditional seat belts in the rear cabin. There are two types of headsets within the helicopter, one with a boom microphone attached and one without. Be mindful of the locations of the first aid kit behind the front facing passenger seats and the air sickness bags, which are between the two rear facing passenger seats. The cargo compartment is accessed by the exterior and is the closest to the tail section that you should ever be. That said, you should never go near the tail section. Besides the obvious dangers of the tail rotor, there are also hot and noxious exhaust fumes in that area. When approaching the aircraft, remember the clock ray method. Approaches should only be made from the 10 or 2 o'clock positions, relative to the front of the aircraft. Remember, helicopters are extremely expensive and should be treated delicately. Lastly, be mindful of fuel consumption. Fuel is very expensive for aircrafts and there must always be minimal wasted time around a running helicopter. Helicopter end planing and deplaning. A landing zone controller will ensure that the landing point is free of FOD and that there is a suitable site for the helicopter to land. This means finding an open area free of obstacles and debris. The safe dimensions is 35 meters by 35 meters. Remember to consider wind direction as helicopters must land and lift off into the wind. Be sure to check that the approaches are obstruction free. Check that the ground at your landing point is firm. With daylight, the slope must be no more than 10 degrees. Landing at night requires a completely flat surface. While the landing zone controller is checking for these things, officers should be placed to prevent civilians from walking into the landing area. Forming up. Form up under the direction of the chalk commander. Remember that there can only be a maximum of six people in the chalk. Form the chalk at the 10 or two o'clock position, 25 meters from the landing point. The chalk commander will assign seating ahead of time and review standard operating procedures. Remember that your backs must be to the wind. Have your packs and equipment off and ready in hand. The last person in the chalk formation should be turned to face the rear. This is to act as security, ensuring no one walks into the landing zone. Throughout all of this, remain alert and vigilant. Boarding. Once the helicopter has landed, the pilot will give a thumbs up to the chalk commander. The chalk commander will return the thumbs up and proceed crouched along the 10 o'clock position line to open the passenger door. If there is any equipment that needs to be secured in the cargo compartment, the chalk commander can proceed to secure it first, then bring his chalk forward. Remember that there is no need to ever move further back than the cargo door. Once the chalk commander has ensured the cargo door is closed, he will then proceed to the rear passenger door. Once the door is open, the chalk commander will give the thumbs up to the next person in line who will proceed to the aircraft. Upon arriving at the helicopter, the chalk commander will point them to their seat. If the passenger is carrying a pack, they will hand it to the chalk commander and the chalk commander will hand them their pack once they are ready. Once the person is seated, the chalk commander will give the thumbs up to the next person in line. This process is repeated until all personnel are seated and secured. Once the chalk commander is satisfied that all personnel are secure, he will secure the rear passenger compartment door. The chalk commander will then proceed to the co-pilot seat. They will enter the aircraft and get belted in, being cautious of the pedals and pilot controls. They will place their boom mic headset on and report their chalk good to go. If you are the chalk commander, remember that you may be receiving emergency personnel with little or no experience around helicopters. Think and plan ahead accordingly. End planing and deplaning with a litter. 
The chalk must contain the chalk commander plus four officers to carry the litter. The chalk commander will brief everyone involved regarding what will happen, then assign each person to their roles. When the aircraft lands, the pilot will give the thumbs up for approach. Chalk commander will approach along the 10 or 2 o'clock line and open both rear passenger compartment doors. The chalk commander will move around the front of the aircraft to open the other door. The chalk commander will then give the thumbs up for the chalk to proceed forward. The chalk will approach with the litter held horizontally and place the head of the litter on the rear bench seat. The litter will be buckled into place, preventing any movement. Two predetermined chalk members will go with the litter on the flight. This will be determined by the most qualified medical professional during a live rescue. For the recovery of unidentified human remains, members of the Niagara Regional Police Criminal Investigations Bureau, Forensic Science Unit, or a doctor from the Regional Coroner's Office. Once the litter and members of the chalk are secure, the chalk commander will let the pilot know that they are ready for flight. Be mindful that two trained personnel must be ready to receive the incoming litter and chalk members. This must be coordinated ahead of time and set in action. Normally, this is at the Niagara Helicopters helipad or on the grass field for the recovery of unidentified human remains. In flight, before takeoff, the pilot may be communicating with a control tower or other aircraft. Refrain from being too talkative unless it involves personnel safety. Remain belted throughout the entire flight. Do not touch the latches or knobs in flight as they may send a warning light to the pilot. Remember to observe and always be on the lookout for other aircraft, wires, birds, or any in-flight hazard. Deplaning. Upon landing, the pilot will indicate to the chalk commander when it is safe to exit the aircraft. The chalk commander will undo their seatbelt stow their headset, and exit. The chalk commander will open the rear passenger door and in reverse order signal to his chalk who comes out first and point in the direction that they will go. Upon exiting the aircraft, remain at a crouch. Proceed to the form-up position in the direction of 10 o'clock for 25 meters. Should you have a pack, hand it to the chalk commander who will hold it until you are out of the aircraft. This process will continue until all personnel are clear of the aircraft. Once the passenger compartment is empty, the chalk commander will ensure no straps are hanging out, secure the passenger compartment door, then head to the 10 o'clock form-up position. All personnel will be down in the crouch or on one knee. When the chalk commander scans the landing point and ensures it is clear and his people are safe, he will signal to the pilot with a thumbs up. This tells the pilot the chalk is secure and the landing point is clear for takeoff. End planing and deplaning at the hover. This technique is used when ground conditions are either unstable or unknown and are therefore untrusted. The procedure is identical to end planing and deplaning on the ground. However, extra care must be given when entering and exiting the aircraft. A light transfer of body weight must be done either from the ground to the skid for entry or from the aircraft to the skid upon exit. Another thing to consider is static electricity. This is especially an issue in the cold dry winter air as helicopters generate static electricity when in a hover. Therefore, when on the ground, try to grab the seats or seat belts when entering. Although it will not cause any harm, grabbing the fuselage can provide a shock.
all the while, avoid jumping to and from the aircraft. And remember that easy, gentle weight transfers are crucial. Lastly, use extreme caution when operating with any sloped ground. This may bring the main rotor in very close proximity to the ground. Emergency Procedures Should there be a mechanical problem, you will hear a very annoying audible tone. Upon hearing this tone, tighten your seat belts and fold your arms in. Once you have landed, do not exit until the pilot or chalk commander have informed you to do so, and in what direction. If the pilot and chalk commander are incapacitated, wait for the blades to stop and move in a safe direction. Summon assistance and administer first aid. Helicopter short haul. These operations are extremely high risk and should never be conducted unless you have been properly trained. Once the call has been received for an emergency that would require a short haul, there will be a mission briefing where the complex factors around the haul will be discussed. These factors include weather, daylight, location and condition of the victim. Finally, it is the pilot's final call to make the go or no go decision. If the mission is a go, the pilot will undergo a full pre-flight check with the aircraft and crew. The next phase is the recon flight, where the pilot will circle the victims in need of rescue. In this exercise, the victims are on a simulated boat in distress. Both the pilot and spotter will remark on the conditions regarding the surrounding area. Upon landing, the aircraft will be rigged for the short haul. The pilot will then initiate a final confirmation briefing with the spotter and rescue officer. Once this has been completed, the mission is a go and the short haul will be conducted. This is made possible by the Petzl Rescue Triangle. The rescuer will apply the rescue triangle to the victim, then attach the triangle to themselves. In the event of an actual short haul rescue, the victim will not need a harness. The ones used in this video are to assist in the training. Be mindful that carrying external human cargo is extremely dangerous. Only pilots with extensive training and great skill can perform these operations. Upon completion of the short haul, all personnel involved will undergo a debrief with the pilot. Once again, this video is to refresh those that already have hands-on training in short haul techniques and helicopter safety.